going to keep reviewing some skills from earlier in the year. Today we're going to take a look at fractions and decimals, and we are going to use the relationships among these problems to solve other uh, multiplication problems. This is also going to lead us into our division review. So let's take a look at our first problem here. We have 1 fourth of 44 is blank. Well, let's see. All of these problems relate to each other. We've got 1 fourth of 44 here. We've got 25 hundredths times 44 equals blank. And then we have 25 times 44 equals blank. So how do they relate? Well, let's take a look. 1 fourth of a dollar would be 25 cents. So this 25 hundredths right here is the decimal equivalent of this fraction 1 fourth. Now our last problem, 25, is the same number as our decimal, or similar numbers I should say, but our decimal has moved over two places. Um, so our decimal now goes from being right here in front of the two to now being an invisible one after the five to make it a whole number. So we will talk about that when we get over to that problem. But let's start with one fourth of 44. Remember when we see fraction one fourth of a whole number, we are simply multiplying um, one fourth times 44. But since we're doing a fraction, we're not really multiplying because this is not even a whole number, okay? If we had a one here, one whole, and we multiplied one whole by 44, we would get the answer of 44. So we know that our answer, since this is less than one whole, our answer is gonna be smaller than 44. How do we do this? Well, you guys might remember, um, we take this whole number of 44 and we divide it by our denominator. So in this case, we would be doing 44 divided by 4, and we would get 11. Now, we have to look at our numerator here, but our numerator is 1. So I'm going to multiply this answer by whatever the numerator is. Well, I know that 11 times 1... equals one, or 11, I'm sorry. So my answer to 1 fourth of 44 is going to be 11. Now if I wanna check that, I can do the opposite. I know that division and multiplication, they're kind of like siblings, but they're opposite. They're, they're together, we need them, and we can use them to check each other. So let's see, 1 fourth, if 1 fourth of 44, equals 11, well then that must mean, I'm trying to think of the best way to do this, there we go. That must mean that 2 fourths of 44 equals 22. I would add 11 every time. So then 3 fourths of 44 would equal 33 and four fourths or one whole of 44 would equal 44. Is that correct? Perfect. All right, so I'm gonna leave this here, but you do not need to show all this work today for um, your problems. All you simply have to do would be showing us this, me this problem, uh, this here right here. That would be the perfect amount of work to be shown today. Now, if we know what 1 fourth of 44 is, guess what? We know what 25 hundredths times 44 is because 1 fourth and 25 hundredths are the same number. Ah, what am I doing here? Sorry. So, I know my answer for the first two problems. No problem. All right. Now this last one, this is where it gets a little tricky because we have 25 times 44. Now we could do the multiplication, but that's gonna take us a while. Let's use the relationship among the problems to help us. Over here, we've got 25 hundredths times 44. We have our decimal right here. Okay, that's our decimal right here. 
And when you look over at this problem, like I said before, when we have a whole number, we have an imaginary decimal at the end of the number. So our decimal now jumped two places. Okay, when that happens, we're multiplying it by 100. So let's take this answer and multiply it by 100 to get this answer. So 11 times 100 is going to equal 1100 or 1100, however you want to write it. All right, let's take a look at this bottom problem. Now, we're, we've got the sim, a similar setup, only a different fraction. All right, our fraction here is 3 fourths. So we're finding 3 fourths of 32. What I want to do first, though, is I want to find what 1 fourth is, okay? Because that would mean I simply just do 32 divided by 4, which I know is 8. So if 1 fourth of 32 is 8, to find 3 fourths, all I do is multiply 8 times 3. And 8 times 3, you know, I'll put that right here so you guys have it. Eight times three is twenty-four. So three fourths of thirty-two is going to equal twenty-four. All right. Now let's take a look at this problem. We've got three fourths of thirty-two here, and then we have seventy-five hundredths times thirty-two. Well, I know that three fourths of a dollar is seventy-five cents. So 3 fourths and 75 hundredths are actually the same number, which means, boom, I've got my answer for this problem. All right, our last problem, we have the same situation as we did in our first problem, where we have an invisible decimal here at the end of the number, because it's a whole number. So we moved our decimal over two places, which means all we have to do is multiply our answer, 24, by 100 and we are going to get 2400 or if you want to write it as 2400 both are correct now one thing I want you to keep in mind when you're going on to your class kick today is that I'm showing you how to do this when they give you the whole number you're gonna see some problems today where you're gonna have to figure out that whole number that we would normally divide. So as I said before, multiplication and division, they're opposites. So you're going to have to use that to help you today. Okay, one half of 62, I'm sorry, one half of what equals 62? Well, in this case, I want to multiply 62 by my denominator. And that's going to give me my answer. If this is confusing to you guys and you need a little more help, come see me on Zoom at 1130. Good luck, guys.